So I'm going to talk quite informally to you about spiritual conversation. We've had lots of requests here for guidance, guidelines, books to read. And so we thought, well, let's make a, a short video, maybe show some slides that might help you or help groups to understand and to use spiritual conversation. It's a practical um, tool. It's also a way of relating to each other that I think is quite important. I'm going to use my notes here and uh, hopefully guide you through a few steps. The starting point is important. The starting point is that God works in each one of us. The Spirit of God is working, working in you and in me and in any group that we're meeting. God is active, God is alive, God is working in the world today. And that's the key starting point. So when I'm with someone else, and even if I disagree with them, well, maybe the Spirit of God is saying something to that person. And how can I listen, learn, be open? It's not always so easy. But we want to, to, to see, to, to catch on to what's the Trinity trying to do in the world today? Trying to catch on to that and become collaborators with the Trinity, if you like. Try and help, help the kingdom, help the kingdom move forward. Bring those elements of peace and justice and reconciliation and, and solidarity. Um, there's, there's a theological background to this. Each one of us is a little word of God. Each one of us a little letter of the alphabet. And together we can spell out something great. I got this in a book by Elizabeth Johnson, and I think she's adapting Karl Rahner. So we're each one of us a little letter of the alphabet. And together we'll spell out something great. Together. So a couple of things. Spiritual conversation, first of all, it involves a kind of an active listening. There's an image I use of a deer with big ears, or you can think of an elephant, really listening. We need, we need to listen well in, act, in an active way. Not just listen passively, yes, 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 but really listen in an engaged way to the other person. This person has something to tell me. I can learn something from this person. Not forced, really being convinced, yes, the Spirit of God is speaking through that person. That's the first element. And then intentional speaking. So I'm not just saying any old thing. I'm speaking, I'm listening to myself. What's the Spirit saying to me about this issue? It can be closing a school, opening a parish, appointing a new director of a, of a, of a work. Because spiritual conversation isn't just I'll share my faith. Did I get bored at Mass? Have I gone to the sacraments recently? It's about very real, practical things. Our God is incarnate. That's our, our Christian faith. God became incarnate, involved in the world. So spiritual conversation, it can be my faith sharing, but it can also be we want to discuss some controversial issue some issue that we don't agree on, that's conflictual. Not easy to do. But I, I, I do that by listening to you, by respecting that the Spirit might be speaking through you, is speaking through you. And then by, by respecting myself, yes, the Spirit possibly is speaking through me. So I listen to myself. I'm ready to show my feelings, my thoughts, to share my thoughts, my reactions. That's all kind of becoming a contemplative in action. Before a, a conversation, let's say about, um, let's say that there's a decision to be made about maybe closing a school. Um, the issue has to be clear. So what's the issue under discussion? What will we talk about? And then before we talk about it, before we say, well, let's, 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 will we close this school that we've had for maybe a hundred years or 200 years? We pray. We take an hour, an hour and a half, a half a day to pray. I can't share what the Spirit of God is saying to me unless 
I listened to the Spirit of God. And you know, when someone comes to share and hasn't done the prayer, you kind of know it. There's a different, a different sensibility, a different feeling. There really is. So the prayer is so important. So prayer is the first step, if you like. And then in the actual group meeting, there's three rounds you can use. And by the way, the ideal group number is about six. Because it's quite intense sometimes. If I'm listening to different views, if the group is too big, it's too much. And I, I find personally, I tend to just switch off. But a group of six people, there should be a timekeeper, somebody whose job basically is to say, every one of us has about six minutes, say, in the first round. And the first round then is, is I, without interruption, I share, well, when I prayed about closing this school, here's what I thought, here's what I felt, here's where I am about this issue. And I speak for five, six minutes. And then the next person, it goes around in a circle and everyone gets a chance to say his or her opinion. That's round one. After that, the group leader says, well, let's, let's pause, let's just, let's just hear all of that. How does it resonate? And then the second round, probably each person speaks for three, four minutes, is when I get a chance to, to react to the other person, but not to react in a way of arguing, but to, to say, you know, when you said that about the school and the wonderful tradition, that resonated with me. I could appreciate all of the work that you've done here teaching in the school for 20 years. I'm still not convinced, but I want you to know that that's what resonated in me. I felt gratitude. Or you might say, you know, when you said that, I felt, I felt annoyed, I felt frustrated, I felt uh, upset. So again, you say where you are without interruption. But this time, you're discerning where the Spirit is in the group. What's the Spirit saying to us? The first round was, what was the Spirit saying to me? The second round, you're trying to get a sense of the us. What's the Spirit saying to us? And then, Another pause after the second round. And then the third round is, any, is anything emerging? Is there any kind of consensus? Often on a difficult issue, like closing a, an institution, there might not be. And then you have to go off and in a week's time or next day, come back after more prayer. But there could be consensus, a sense, yeah, maybe it seems to be that five of us really are thinking in this direction. But we, we're still, there are still some serious concerns and um, expressions of the, the sixth person. And she's not comfortable and we need to listen to that. So it's a very gentle, but also quite intense process. Because it's not easy to listen to someone who's taking the opposite view to the view I have. I might want the school to stay open. You might want the school to close. We have strong feelings. So to listen to you openly with genuine openness, not a fake openness, that's a fairly high level of personal, personal growth, trust, integrity. But the advantage of the three rounds is that you can have the difficult conversation without getting into an argument. The advantage of the timing, everybody has more or less an equal amount of time. So the extroverts don't, don't dominate. The 
the people who speak the language fluently don't dominate. It's very Christian. Everybody gets their chance to speak. Everybody gets listened to and respected. It's a very Christian approach to things, um, respectful. It builds community. And just before I finish, just the advantages of this methodology, or more than a methodology, really a, a way of being in a group, a way of being with people. Well, first of all, it, it builds a sense of community. It builds trust. It enhances respect. It leaves room for the Holy Spirit. Instead of arguing back and forth and getting more and more into my position and, and dug in, there's kind of a gentleness. That's why we have the pause after each round. It connects to something very deep in each person. Very, very deep. And it, it really f helps us to become free. We can speak without interruption, listen to each other, and learn from each other. And it's interesting that in some of the business books or the, the, the consultants uh, that you come across, they're becoming aware, they don't call it spiritual conversation, and they don't refer to the faith dimension, but they're becoming aware of, in groups, it's so important to, to leave space, to break this tension of arguments back and forth, to take a moment for, for a bit of depth, Take a moment for silence. It might be called prayer in this business um, dimension. In our Christian tradition, it is. So spiritual conversation, just very simple in some ways. Active listening, intentional speaking, a clear question, three rounds with, with time and with, with a, a, per, a person to keep the time and a sense of respect for each other. A recent example in the church was the, the synod on, on youth and vocational discernment that was held. Pope Francis, after, I think it was every five interventions, he said, okay, we'll stop. We'll take a few minutes in silence. And it broke this sense of, you know, we're waiting for endless time after time interventions from all these different people who have come. It broke that and it said, there's something else happening here. We're listening to the Spirit of God. And my last word is, don't underestimate the Holy Spirit. You'll be amazed at what the Holy Spirit can do for yourself, for your group, for the church and, and for our world. Thank you. <laughs>